Okay, welcome back. This is video number three. So quality is key. Now that you understand how Pinterest works and what type of people use it and their frame of mind and the culture and all of that, let's talk about the images that go to these boards. So images and other visual content must be extremely high quality. Why? Because if you think about it, you are literally competing against thousands of other high quality images. So looking amateur or just throwing up an image just to do that is not a choice. Because if that's the case, your image is going to be ignored. In fact, you need to know how to create high quality images. If you analyze thousands of Pinterest posts and images, and the images that are being pinned, you realize they have something in common. And that commonality is that they are high quality images. And not only that, they literally grab people in. They have a call to action. They have specific elements, which we'll talk about at a later video when we talk about the anatomy. Now you can either do this yourself by taking a photography class. In fact, a lot of people that we have noticed that have done really well, they have said that they have gone to take photography classes, they have gotten a really good camera, and they've learned how to take different angles. Now, if that's not something that you really wanna do, then of course you can purchase royalty-free stock images from bigstockphoto.com which is essentially a humongous database of images where you can literally find images of any niche. So if you're looking for images for a baked potato or a chicken parmesan dish, you are more likely to be able to find that on these sites. Now, there are other free sites like pixabay.com or unsplash.com and you can use these sites to get these images and then of course use an image editor later down the road to make it look good. Now we recommend that you do all of this later once you figure out and understand what each image should contain. So it's not about just slapping a bunch of images or downloading them from royalty free stock sites and then uploading them. It's a matter about getting these images and then of course using an image editor, which we'll show you later on, on how to make it look more fancy. Or you can also hire somebody to do it for you. So if you have products that you're selling, then you can actually send these products to somebody who is a professional product photographer. And you can find these people on upwork.com or even fiverr.com. And they will literally take a photograph of your products in different angles to make it look really good. So if you think about when you buy a hamburger, a lot of times when you see these commercials with hamburgers, you see that they look really amazing, they look beautiful, but then when you get the hamburger from the restaurant, it, it looks nothing like it. So these product photographers really know how to make your product stand out and look really a appealing, enticing, and it's something that people want to click on. So that's just something to think about. If you don't have the time or any of that to do that, then you can hire somebody to do that for you. So I wanted to make sure that I cover different avenues so that you understand what options essentially that you have. So the point of all of this is that crap does not survive Pinterest. So if you take the photograph yourself and it doesn't look that great, then at the end of the day, it may not convert. So another myth that I wanna say is that a lot of times people will say, if you buy this software that will pin thousands of images, you'll get tons and tons of traffic back. Now, some of that software out there is legit and does work. But then some of the software out there that is automated and will pin thousands of images and it'll grab maybe some images from Pixabay automatically and all that. Yeah, that's more of the quantity kind of mindset than quality. 
So what we're going here is about quality. So if you see a software that is selling you, hey, buy the software and you get hundreds of traffic right away, they might work, they may not, but at the end of the day, we really need to focus on quality over quantity. So rather than doing that, you really wanna think about how you can use the right images in your campaign. If you think about how can I get somebody interested in this product, so when they click on it, they get sent to a piece of content that describes and elaborates further of the reasoning of clicking on it. If so, if they click on a link about chicken parmesan, obviously you're going to want to send them to a article about chicken parmesan. You don't want to send them to an article about chicken. Even though they're both chicken, they need to be exact, if that makes sense. So maybe you can send them to a video on how to make chicken parmesan. And you show them how to make it, but you talk about the ingredients, but you don't go in depth. So you say, if you want to get this recipe or the secret recipe, or you want to get some bonus videos and this recipe, sign up here on this free list and you can give it to them. And if you can imagine you will attract somebody, you'll build a list of people who are extremely targeted. So basically what I'm saying is forget about all the software that promises you that you're going to get thousands of clicks to your website. Really focus on the quality of the click or how you create the marketing campaign first and how you're going to convert cold traffic into prospective buyers. So another key point here, which I've touched base on is congruency is making sure that your image matches your content, which we'll discuss in the next video. Now, remember the image that you put up will attract and excite someone. You want to attract the right person. So really knowing and understanding the demographics or what your person that you're trying to attract what will look like is really the first step to a successful marketing campaign. So if we go back to the person who might be looking for low sugar cupcakes, that type of person, why are they looking for low sugar? Maybe they are on a diet. Why are, are they on a diet? Are, do they have some sort of health issues or do they have cholesterol or low cholesterol diet? Are they facing a specific problem? You really need to think about that because if you do, then you can talk about that in your article or your image and you can grab people in. So you could do something like low cholesterol cupcakes, for example, or healthy desserts for diabetics kind of thing. So you, you know when you track that type of person, they are maybe going through diabetes or low cholesterol or, or specific reasoning. And because of that reasoning, you're able to talk with them. You're able to gain their trust. And in the article, you could say, hey, here's some low sugar cupcakes for diabetics and all that. And that way you can relate to them on a deeper level. So maybe in the article, in the opt-in in the autoresponder series, you can literally talk to them and say, hey, you know, being a diabetic is hard because you can't eat certain foods. But I want to say that there's certain foods that you can eat and still enjoy life kind of thing. And that's how you're going to be able to sell. It's not about getting thousands of clicks to from your image to your article. It's about getting the 10 people or the 20 people that really understand what you're talking about because in that way in that light they're going to be more open to actually buying from you if that makes sense so one way of doing this is to take a look at magazines in your niche magazines are really great ways to figure it out what kind of images that you can actually use that will excite people. Because a lot of these magazine companies will invest millions and thousands of dollars and hundreds of thousands of dollars into figuring out what actually works 
with their prospects and their customers and their buyers. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so to keep it simple, we can go to magazines.com and you'll literally see hundreds of different magazines. If you click on the all categories here, you'll be able to see the different categories. We have animal pets, we have art, we have fashion, we have all sorts of things. But to keep it simple, I'm going to type in recipe and let's just see what we get. So we've got cooking, food, and beverage, magazine subscriptions. Now, obviously, I'm not going to be able to look inside the magazine, but just by taking a look at them will allow me to get a better idea of what they're putting out. Now, sometimes you can even do a reverse engineering and do a Google search on that magazine, and sometimes these sites will have websites. So that's something that we'll actually do. So All Recipes is an actual website, so we know that. But let's just go ahead and click this. So we got DIY donuts and DIY, remember we mentioned that was do it yourself. So we already know right off the bat that people that are into allrecipes.com are people that are interested in doing it themselves. And that really matches the type of person that we're trying to track with Pinterest. Now, if we go here, Let's see here, we click this, we can just click these images to kind of get an idea of the way that they have set up their images. And you can actually copy this and not actually copy exact, but get an idea of, okay, they're using plates, they're putting words on top of here, and they're putting text on the side and that's what makes it look good. So you could do something very similar. Now let's do a search on all recipes. We know that this is actually a website, but let's go ahead and click more info before we do that. We see here, we read this. Let's just go back to allrecipes.com. So we can see 12 delicious chicken thigh dinners. Now, one little tip that I'm going to give you is that a lot of times with Pinterest type articles, if you can do something like the top five or the top 10 or, or 10 chicken dinners or 10 maybe low carb desserts or five top five low sugar desserts kind of thing, that actually will do really well. And those tend to get pinned a lot because it's not just one, it's many, and they're definitely interested in that. So we can see in terms of the images that could potentially be pinned, they're simply pictures of the food. Now, in terms of images, you can kind of get away with this with food because and without any words or anything like that. But by adding words in some sort of call to action, such as want this recipe, click here. If somebody pins that, they're most likely going to click there versus they're just seeing this because they don't exactly know what this is. So you could put the words baked teriyaki chicken on this so that somebody knows, okay, this is baked teriyaki chicken because not all the time what can you take a look at an image and know exactly what it is all about but if you notice one thing that I mentioned earlier is that this article is a great example of going from an image to an article that has tons of visual information and visual content so you can see that this page is literally filled with images so it's got about 12 images and in terms of text, very little text. So that's something to keep in mind with Pinterest is that a lot of people go there looking for images. When they click on an image, they're not looking for a full article of text. They're looking for more images. So if you can do that, 
that will keep people on your site and that will get people more engaged. 